Hi, I'm Sid from Sonic and Vision. It's my company that makes music for visual media. Today, I'm going to be doing this demo of Raven MTI, and I'm going to be using it with my DAW Nuendo. The things that I'm going to cover are namely three things. Uh, one is track visibility and selection. Secondly, I'm going to get into automated typing. And thirdly, it's basic door control and gestures, which gets very detailed. So let's get into it. The most obvious and easy way to select tracks would be just selecting them with your fingers like this. The other way to select tracks would be through the side panel which is also quite useful and user friendly because we can just swipe our fingers around and make things visible. And then my favorite way to access tracks would be through the favorite toolbar and some of these other folder buttons here. So what we can do with these folder buttons, which are there in other layouts too, for example, here or here. So, so what we're going to do with these folder buttons are when I press uh, Woodwinds, it will go to the Woodwinds folder, select the folder, open the folder up, and select everything that's inside the folder. It's really useful for enabling tracks or even um, you know making things that are not visible visible, um, or and vice versa. So the first thing I've selected all the tracks within the Woodwinds folder, and uh, I can enable and disable them um, with some gestures, which I'll get into later. Uh, the other way to select tracks would be, uh, for instance, we we have our percussion instruments here. Through our favorite toolbar, we can access all the instruments in percussion like separately um, by separate buttons, which is really useful. Uh, especially if we're recording uh, percussion, we can just try out different instruments uh, very quickly without having to scroll. Um, then uh, the other thing is, uh, if I want to select something, it has to be uh, visible and it has to be, uh, if it's inside a folder, the folder has to be open. So for instance, if we have to get into uh, filtering things out based on conditions, which are based on numbers and letters, uh, both do separate things. Um, I can select all my strings here and then what I can do is uh, narrow things down uh, based on libraries with our letters here. So A is for Berlin strings. And if I was to select Con Sordino, for example, I would just do B. And uh, also, if I were to press violins here, it would select all the violins that are visible inside open folders. And uh, then I can filter them down uh, according to like if it's while in one or two, like with the numbers. And also I can filter them down like I showed before with the letters. So that, that gives us fairly easy access to wherever we want to go. Um, same thing works for our flutes as well. So flute one, flute two, flute three, piccolo flute, and alto flute of those. It just has to be selected and it narrows things down. Really useful too. Uh, besides this, there's just one thing uh, that I would also like to show fair tracks selection and visibility is concerned, which is with gestures. What we can do is get to all the hidden tracks and hide the disabled tracks with a one finger swipe right. So now it's showing me all the alternate tracks that were there behind the scenes. So uh, I have my Berlin uh, symphonic strings and Hans Zimmer strings here. Now, if I want to bring them into, say, the whole visibility uh, group of tracks, like the visible group of tracks, what I can do is I can simply select these 
things. Uh, for example, I want uh, Hans Zimmer strings only. That's, I think, D. So we have Hans Zimmer strings. Now I can just toggle that same one finger swipe command. Behind the scenes, it's actually selected. So I just have to swipe with two fingers and whatever track is selected, is it's going to toggle the visibility for that. So there we go. I think I had selected Oboe 2 by mistake over there. So that also disappeared, but you don't have to select Oboe 2. It just does it with these. Um, so now it's all visible. I can, again, make it invisible because I don't want it. Uh, With one finger going left on the screen, I can select all the tracks within the selected folder. So now getting into automated typing, uh, we can access the mixer quite easily right here and we can just press wherever we want a plugin and I've set it up in such a way that I only get the UAD plugins when I press these buttons and I only get a certain kind of UAD plugins when I press these buttons. So the first thing I want is for instance equalizers. So when I press equalizer it just types it for me. I have all the equalizers that I can access so easily. Then let's say I want to add a channel strip here. I can just go here and Press this button and it brings us to all the channel strips that are available. Uh, and there's one more really interesting function uh, that has a little more than just automated typing. What we can do is say select percussion here and uh, say I want to add a UAD on slot 2. So what I'm going to do is just press this button here and as we can see it brings us to slot two and we can add whichever plugin we want such as say SSL bus compressor. So as you can see it adds it to the slot two uh, but I don't want it so I'm going to remove it. That kind of covers uh, what I had for automated typing and off to the next section which is uh, gestures and uh, editing and other stuff. So let's get to that now. So the first thing that I want to do is uh, make things a little tidier. I can do that with the hide uh, empty tracks button. It only shows all the tracks which has parts in it. Now you can see that with one finger we can click by tapping. If we press it's, it, it's a double click. So as you can see a double click we can also open these folder tracks with double clicks. Um, now, uh, with one finger, if we just drag it, it's click and drag. Uh, we can use that for various things by having command pressed or, you know, shift and so on. Um, that takes care of one finger. Now, if we go to two fingers, we can navigate very easily with two fingers. Now, if we do a tap with two fingers, we get the right click. Uh, for Nuendo it's really convenient because all the tools are here. We can also right click here for instance and add tracks or whatever. Uh, then if we do a pr uh, then if we do a double tap it opens up the instrument of whichever track selected. If we do a press 
that basically disables or enables a track. For instance, if we do a press here, if we do a rotate, it does edit undo and edit redo. So we're going to basically delete something just so that we can see how it does to undo and redo. And the special thing is that as we keep rotating, it keeps undoing and keeps redoing. So we've deleted these two tracks. I'm going to rotate two fingers. And then I'm going to do redo. Then undo again. It's, it's, it's really convenient and simple. Now, as we go to three fingers, three fingers can help us with uh, zooming. Now, as we zoom out or zoom in or horizontally as well, if we do a three finger tap, it will take us to uh, whichever uh, part is selected. The, it's going to take us to the zoom level of that. So now if we want our cycle range uh, to be zoomed into, we can do a double tap. And lastly, if we want our cycle range to be exactly where a um, specific part is, we can just select a part and then three finger press. And you can see the cycle changes, cycle range has changed. And we can zoom into cycle range with double tap. Um, now, if we go into uh, five fingers. I'm going to skip three, uh, four fingers for now and some other features because you'll see why. Uh, five fingers has these really interesting features. If I swipe left, it selects all the melodic and harmonic parts. If I swipe right, it does the same with percussion. If I expand five fingers, it opens up all the parts in the key editor that are selected. Now, because I haven't written much for percussion, it's just that one note for shines. Uh, now, what I can do is, without having to close this window, I can change between percussion and melodic and harmonic. Uh, that's one of the most convenient things ever. Getting into four finger movements, it's because uh, I can change the grid here the quantization of the grid with four fingers left and right. That, that's why I waited to show it um, because I wanted to show it in this window. Uh, now I can just do a tap of four fingers that toggles between triplets. I can do a double tap which toggles between dotted. I can also select some notes and uh, change the velocity by 5% increments by dragging forefinger up and down. Now we can see that uh, I did not get to the rotations uh, for three fingers and four fingers and five fingers. That's also because it's really useful in this window. Uh, rotation for three fingers is going to move the starting point of a note, whereas rotation for four fingers is going to move the ending point of a note. Uh, rotation for five fingers is going to nudge whatever is selected. If I want to uh, access uh, certain lanes, I can also do these uh, finger swipes from uh, like from the edge of the screen from the upper side. So one finger down is going to give us the modulation lane, two fingers down is going to give us the velocity lane, and three finger down is, oh sorry, I guess my three fingers don't stick together well, is going to take us to the expression lane. Now I can also access uh, all the lanes that have been used in the parts that are selected by double tapping with five fingers. 
I can also make sure that I don't have any lanes showing here by just tapping once with five finger. And if I want to close any window under the gesture, like you may have seen me do that, uh, I can just uh, pinch with five fingers. Pinching also has some cool features with uh, three fingers and four fingers because uh, with three fingers what we have is if we pinch uh, firstly I want to zoom into this secondly I want to open only this part if I do a pinch with three fingers uh, it has the command of copy so I've copied this now if I want to paste that there I can just bring the cursor here and I can just do a four finger expand. Uh, oh no, it, it's a three finger expand to do a paste, a regular paste. But if I want to do a paste in place, I can do a four finger expand. It's pasted it in place, it's just that it's on top of it. Uh, what I can do is maybe uh, paste it in another instrument or another key editor. So I've copied this, I'm going to close it. Sorry about that. Um, I'm going to open this one and I'm just going to do a paste in place with four finger expand. So you can see it, it came at the right place and it works perfectly. If I want to do a cut and paste somewhere, I can just do four finger pinch. So that cuts it but I don't want to do that now. So that, that takes care of some of the features that are there uh, with the gestures. Uh, I can also get into some more interesting stuff, which is with the uh, CC values. If I select this note, and if I press start to modulation, what's going to happen is, it's going to bring us a point, a CC uh, value at uh, in modulation at the start point of this note. Now, if I wanted that thing to be at the end of this note, I can just do end to modulation. And then I can select it again and do a start to modulation. And, and then I can set the value of it here too. Um, I have increments of uh, plus four and minus four as well. And you can do ramp or step. And as you can see, it's quite self-explanatory, the buttons here, you know. I just have this till now, but I'm going to be making more buttons. I hope this video was informative and fun to watch, at least for some of you. Um, I hope uh, if you want to get in touch with me, please reach out uh, through my website uh, and uh, Feel free to do any comments or any feedback would be very appreciated. Thank you for watching. It's uh, Sid with Sonic and Vision. Goodbye.